starting with a Silly Farm split cake called Gumdrop and a Teardrop sponge. I'm going to sweep some paint over my daughter's eye and then I'm going to place this sponge down to create kind of a butterfly shape over one eye and then do the same thing on the opposite side but below the eye. I want an asymmetrical mask shape so I'm going to start with basically just the teardrop shape above and below one eye and then I'm going to connect it in the middle and manipulate it a little bit so I get the shape that I want but using these teardrop sponges really helps get the kind of start of that shape down and then you can alter it and add to it as you go. Um, these are really good for masks of all kinds, but it's perfect for a little Halloween mask that we're going to do. So you can see I'm just dragging the color to connect it in the middle. And then I'm also going to pull it over this side of her eye and just continue to place the color down until I have the shape that I want for the background of our mask. And then while that's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and spray it with some gold holographic glitter so that it has some shine to it. And then I'm taking the Split Cake Tropical by Tag and a Filbert brush and loading up the orange and yellow. And to do the pumpkin, you just want to make little crescent shapes. Be sure to turn the brush as you go back and forth so you're darker shade of orange is on the outside. You can see I'm flipping the brush and flipping the brush and just making little C or crescent shapes and it is the easiest pumpkin. Even my daughter was super impressed with my skills. <laughs> and then I'm just adding a brown stem and then going along the bottom of the pumpkin and doing some light outlining as well as on the top and then in between the segments of the pumpkin to just give it some depth and an outline. I chose to use brown so that it's not too harsh. Uh, black would have been a little harsh and would have stood out too much. So just use a, a brown and you'll get a really nice soft look. Now with a liner brush, I'm just going to do some green swirls coming from our pumpkin to mimic vines. And you can do as many of these as you want. Switch up the colors a little bit so you have dark and light completely up to you. But I do think it adds a nice whimsical touch to the pumpkin and it gives you something to kind of fill up the forehead. And then just creating a few leaves as well with a small brush. I start on the tip of my brush and then press down and then flick back up on the tip. And it just is some really, really easy, quick leaves so that our pumpkin has something to sit on and a few leaves um, coming from the vines. And for our spider webs, I'm taking some strong black. I'm using Diamond Effects Black, which is one of my favorites. And it's just a series of teardrops, starting thicker and then pulling in thinner. And you can make this as tight and perfect as you want or as loose and whimsical as you want. I like my spider webs to be a little imperfect. So as I go, I'm just pulling little scallops down in between them and I'm not doing it too organized. Um, I don't like anything to be too perfect so I just prefer it this way but of course you can make them very even and perfect if you'd like. I am just pulling those spider webs down and around and then I did drop it below her eye a little bit where that split cake didn't even cover because I wanted it to frame her eye well and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side just start with some teardrops and then scallops to connect my lines so that they turn into a spider web and this is where she said it started to tickle so she's laughing a little bit and then I do want them to connect at the center rather than just have a gaping hole. So you'll see I pull a few of the lines together at the bridge of her nose. But again, I'm not too particular about this. So um, just have fun with it. It's even okay to make some of these lines swirly and kind of drop off and come back on because I think everything looks a little bit better when it's more artistic and organic, but that's just how I prefer to do it. 
So now we are going to add a few spiders and my spiders are really easy, just a couple dots, a larger dot and a smaller dot. I also was going to do a few more and she told me she only wanted two. So since she's in charge, she's getting two. So I'm going to do one at the top of our pumpkin, sitting on our pumpkin, and then just one falling down the bridge of her nose. To do the legs, I use a liner brush because I like the legs to be nice and creepy and skinny. And I just flick over and up or over and down to create the legs of the spider. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top of the pumpkin. I'm not sure why she started counting here, but she did. So the legs for the spider on the pumpkin, you just want to flick over and down so that it looks like the spider is sitting on top of our pumpkin. And now I'm going to take a thin round brush and just give the pumpkin a few white highlights as well as the lines on our spider web and this is a completely optional step if you're doing this at a festival I might not even get to this step I probably would have stopped a little while ago so of course you can also always alter depending on where you are doing a design like this but if you have the time highlighting is always a great step because it adds a lot of interest and depth And of course, we can't forget lipstick, so she wanted blue lipstick, and that's what she got. Like and subscribe to our channel. Bye! Thanks for watching, you guys. Please like and subscribe as always, and I hope you enjoyed this Halloween design.